When I was seven, the opponent made me an offer of money. Because I was suffering, and so was my family, I turned to witchcraft. I became fascinated with the occult when I decided to skip Sunday school and visit witch temples instead. I studied the fundamentals and went to witchcraft rites. The spirit world was what I want. As I grew older, the darkness gave me strength and understanding. After I joined the witchcraft brotherhood, I became the youngest spiritist and witch in Puerto Rico. Witches and mediums gave me gifts because of my extraordinary abilities. God had a different plan than Satan's. My mother was told by God that I would die as his enemy. My mother fasted and prayed for me after being brought to tears. Despite her best attempts, I was able to level up in occult magic because of my headhunter rank. To destroy God's handiwork, the enemy led me to a high degree of brickwork. When he came out, he handed me wealth and authority. He insisted that I destroy churches rather than offer animals as sacrifices or exchange charms for cash. He made a really generous and powerful offer. He assured me that I would be able to fly and change into a dog. He desired to kill anybody who gave thanks to God since he was unable to enter places of worship. I couldn't reject, so I said yes. He led me to the White Mansion in Puerto Rico, a gathering place for witches, sorcerers, and demons. They said that with someone on my level, I could accomplish things they couldn't. We fought hard when they handed me the task of demolishing churches. I used witchcraft and sorcery to torture evangelical missionary pastors and other people who fasted for 23 years. Since the enemy's weapon was spiritual, I pursued them like a headhunter. My mistreatment was appalling. I went to every denomination. The opponent materialized as a charmingly dazzling angel with eyes the color of the sky. Her eyes were like snakes, and even though she never showed me her feet, she had a black beauty. I was paid $10,000, $20,000 and even $50,000 to demolish churches when I accepted the task. Every time she visited, she provided assignments. She replied, I want you to destroy this particular pastor. Why don't you just kill him? I questioned. Her answer was as follows. I can't be everywhere at the same time. She said she wasn't available all the time. She said that not just me, but churches all around the world were being destroyed by spiritists, demons, and sorcerers. God's people, she insisted, were distinct, holy, and courageous. We were fought by warriors possessed with the Holy Spirit, who were impervious to sorcery. We sent death spears, accidents, and spiritual illnesses, but nothing got through. She wished for me to know that Satan can trick you into thinking he can cure your illness in order to kidnap you. This is the lie he is telling. There is only one way, truth, and life, Christ. I knew the Lord was keeping an eye on me because my mother would always fast and pray for me. I went to a chapel where those in white cloaks fasted and prayed. I couldn't seem to get rid of them. I could blow up a lot of churches, but I couldn't kill a single person in this one. I pondered what was unique about their church. I tried using charms, spells, and witchcraft to pound those somber churches' doors, but I was unable to win over their flock. They hindered my acts, together with the Holy Spirit. I used to go out of my way to damage a church member or the preacher. One woman I met was fascinated by the spouse of another woman. I used her to undermine other Christians' marriages and cursed her religion. To spread the infection to other married couples, I forced her to drop something on the altar. Brothers, it's time to expose the devil. When a Christian group showed up at my house, I had no defense. They pounded on the door and a glowing person materialized, smashing my statues and photos. I froze, wondering how someone could have done that. Blood on the floor was what I expected, but they insisted. They said that because of God Almighty, they have no fear of Satan. My entire body froze. Shut up in the name of Jesus, the preacher said, and I kept silent the entire evening. I was astounded by their strength. I didn't see how my opponent could forgive me after the minister said that God would. I said no, refusing to get to know Jesus. My family was crying, but I was composed. I heard the pastor tell me that God loves me. The Bible pierces the heart with its two sharp edges, which is why I started crying. The Bible said that if I did not believe in Jesus, I would perish. Through the pastor, Jesus declared, Death will come to you if you do not come to me. Still, I turned away from Jesus. It happened suddenly three days later. I experienced renal failure, a stroke, and a heart attack. My spouse drove me to the emergency hospital at 6 in the morning when the physician pronounced me dead. Death astounded me, and I rejected Jesus. 
I thought I understood everything after reading the Satanic Bible, but then my spirit left my body and I gained the ability to see. My corpse was lying on a metal bed as I witnessed. I was unable to re-enter my body for some reason. My senses were all perked up. Sounds like monsters buzzed in my ears. They immediately seized hold of me. When they touched me I experienced tyranny, agony, and sorrow. I was hurting so badly. It felt strange, the silence while my soul cried. I had folks all around me. In this gloomy world, demons moved like shadows. As a portal opened, I discovered about a plague that claimed millions of lives. This location had the strongest fragrance of anywhere. More awful than any pandemic on record. Many sobbed in the open. Stop. I yelled at the devils. On earth, I was served by you. Carlos Lopez is my name. We could care less about your earthly identity. They replied. You were strong back then, but we are in charge now. I was teased by demons dressed like street Barbara. Man, why have you fallen here? Was their insult? I suffered in a variety of ways. With all the heat and steam, it seemed like being in the sun. Numerous souls endured. There were souls falling from every direction as the devils led me to the entryway. We were in a wizard's country with costumed wizards. I realized as I lay down. A flame appeared, ghostly. I said, explain it to me, me. Who am I? The anguish and despair were intolerable. It hurt so bad, it seemed like my soul was vanishing. Worms crawled up my back. These worms with three mouths appeared to come from within. Twenty more would appear if, if I eliminated one. Like lice, they sat on the spirit. Panicked, the spirits cried out, God, save me from here. Worms tormented demons as the latter laughed and hurled fireworms at them. Every time a worm was removed, the demons laughed. I told the devils I knew the fundamentals of witchcraft, and they responded, Who are you going to call? They evolved into pagans' gods. Then why were they here on earth? I asked. They stated, We sow discord in the world that those who seek clarity will find it here in hell. While living, you disregarded the outstanding man's call. You turned down the opportunity, though. Here you are exactly. They do not address God as Lord. I cried out, but the monsters in cages muffled my voice. Witches were smashed in the face by enchanted beings. There were several forms of torture. You're going to hell, not heaven. When people reject Jesus Christ, they die here. There was someone inside, and the devils left. By day, it seemed to be illuminated. Both a wonderful and awful thing occurred. Suddenly, I heard a voice calling out to me. I experienced three visions of Jesus. He seemed to float because of his white coat. His sandals burned, not like hell's. There was a hand that blood washed me. I felt better when the worms had left. Lord, save me from this place, I cried out. My objective is to proclaim your message. After persecuting you, I am aware of my deceit. Pardon me. Lord, please be quiet. I came to get you because I promised your mother. A revelation can come to a damned person. As promised, I want you to see your mother. I was moved by the scene where demons shaped like scorpions tortured prostitutes. I saw guys who had ingested acid from the devil. I saw devils torturing victims by drowning them in mounds of cocaine and marijuana. In hell, I saw pits where damned spirits fell but did not touch the earth. The rooms I viewed were all tidy, but none of them felt very welcoming. The Lord said, I have brought you here for revelations, as I made my request to go. To honor my Father, I have to make these things known to you. If need be, I will prevent my people from visiting this place. The weeping of the Lord aroused me. He said he would take her to a place no one wants to go. My message is the reason why my people do not obey. Words have power to heal or harm. In my vision, demons stabbed submerged humans in a lake. My people did not provide, and these pastors stole offerings and tithes. I asked for excellent shepherds. Describe their journey to me. God answered, you will know why in due course. No one can steal from my domain. A preacher used deceit and guile to entice people. The Holy Spirit, people, and word cannot be manipulated, stated the Lord. If not, you will meet the calamities of my book. I wasn't sure exactly what God had in mind. Do you see the missionary over there? He took me to see her and told me that she had been tormented because she had taken the kids' clothes and sold them. Rather than donating the money to charities, she used it on her home and vehicle. She thought about playing God. My spirit teaches everything, declared God. 
I will tell you why my people stray. As I prayed, the Lord transported me to a scene where people were worshiping God and speaking in tongues. Lord, where is the sin here? They all have hate in their hearts. The Lord cried out of a tornado. Nobody loves my servant more than they claim to. You will be brought before the court if you detest your brother. Therefore, leave your gift at the altar and make peace. Forgive. Don't be a killer. Murderers have no place in my realm. Without love, I am like brass or a clanging cymbal, even though I speak in the tongues of men and angels. 1 Corinthians 13 to 1. Spirit is always teaching me this. I have all the answers and can see into the future. My faith is unstoppable, yet it is meaningless without love. My body was in the bag, my wife had signed the paperwork, and I was in hell. I realized hope may exist even for the hopeless when God brought me back to life. It's time to give up fighting and come back to Jesus. We have to be united by Satan, not by brothers. Our brothers need our support, not our contempt. Let's get them well. Hell is filled of those who have served the gospel for 50 years or more and have not achieved salvation regardless of their status or religion. Submitted is the problem, bro. To follow Christ, you have to forgive your brother. It was hailed as a miracle by the hospital staff, but I know that God healed me. In shadows, we radiate brightness. I hope so.